Let's take a look at worksheet number one. Worksheet number one just basically outlines the very basics of circumference and perimeter. In other words, the distance around a shape. Circumference means around the circle and perimeter means around the polygon. So in this case, uh, we have some basic formulas. Um, circumference is 2 pi r or pi d. Now why are there two formulas? Well, a diameter is equal to two radii. So this diameter in this formula can be converted to two radii in this formula. A nice little formula to know. The other is perimeter, which is just distances around a polygon. You just sum all of those distances. Now, we're in high school, so we're going to try and make that a little trickier than the basics. But um, what I will say is sometimes you're going to have missing uh, lengths, and you want to use the idea of perpendicular pieces, um, or sorry, parallel pieces, um, adding up to each other. For instance, this 10 from here to here is made up of two pieces on the other side of the shape. The 6 here and an unknown piece. So we know that that has to be 4 because the 6 and the 4 add up to the 10. Going the other way, we see dash marks that are equivalent, which means to cut that in half. So 8 is going this way, so this also would be 4 going this way and 4 going this way, because 4 and 4 make the 8, and they're equivalent. With all of those diagrams, they mention something about how, uh, if it looks perpendicular, it is, so that you can easily use the grid idea to add things up. In a case like this, um, this is a pretty tricky little uh, circumference and perimeter problem because there is a curve or an arc as well as a straight piece. So if you want to think about this is the circumference is pi times the diameter. But in this case, we're only doing half of a circle. So we divide by 2, which is 7 pi. Then you can't forget that's going around here. This is the 7 pi piece. And then you have to remember we also have the 14. This is called an exact answer because we're not going to take pi and slam it into a decimal and get a decimal. You may want to do that, which is fine. You take pi, multiply it by the pi key, 3.1415, and off it goes, and add it to 14 to get an overall. Again, that's going to be, this. that would make this about 21, 35, 36 or so. I like it exact, so I just have my students leave it just like that. That would be the perimeter. Over here, the same kind of problem exists, is you have a 14, a 10, that would make another 14 here. So if you add all of that up, 28, 38, this one would be 38 in that port part, and then it, it's got half again, that little trick about a half of a circumference. And where is the diameter? Ah, there it is right there, that 10 is nice. So um, it would be uh, pi times 10, but divided by two, so it would be 5 pi uh, instead of 2 pi r or pi d. It's half of that. So again, this is what I would accept for the perimeter, even though it looks a little awkward or different. I like it that way, but it can go to a decimal as well. The last thing maybe I'd teach you is about a labeling of circle, circular parts. If, um, if you have a circle and there is no center point and they put a number like 20, they are referring to the entire diameter. If you have a circle and it has a, uh, a center point and it still has a 20 over that point, in other words, not distinguishable to the right or left, that is also a diameter. If they draw it and place in a center and distinctively put it to the left or to the right, then it is a radius. All right, uh, we'll take a look at a few examples maybe here. 